some things in the Gita that uh, <clears throat> it seems Arjuna is asking questions, four questions, and there is no answer. In other words, <clears throat> or like Vishnacha Thakur says, like very often, uh, it's like uh, somebody is asking, uh, where are you going? And they answer, I ate rice. <laughs> or like, uh, that reminds me of three <coughs> older guys walking. Yeah, this you will not be able to, to translate, I'm sorry. <coughs> three older guys, tough of hearing, <coughs> walking on the sea shore. <coughs> And uh, one is uh, saying, uh, it's qu quite windy today. The other is saying, it's not Wednesday, it's Thursday. <laughs> and the third, th third says, I'm also, also thirsty, let's go drink something. <laughs> 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 so, uh, in the fourth, sixty-fourth uh, uh, verse of the Bhagavad Gita, we have one answer which I put into the title of uh, today's class <clears throat> How uh, a Sage Walks That was one of the four questions, that was the fourth question But actually there were four questions So that was <clears throat> uh, after Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita described to Arjuna <clears throat> How we are all eternal How we can um, act uh, without suffering, how we can be in this world uh, without being disturbed, and uh, we can attain peace. So then Arjuna is uh, asking, can you please, so he's asking four questions, which is the first time he's um, asking questions in, in uh, uh, the Bhagavad Gita from uh, Krishna, <coughs> and he is based on his instructions. This is verse 54. So he says, Stita uh, Pragyasya, of this intelligent sage who is peaceful, what is his language? <clears throat> then, Stita uh, Pragyasya Ka Bhasha, what is his language? Then, Stita Dik Kim Prabhashita, how does he speak? Then Kim Asita, how does he sit? And then Prajeta uh, Kim, how does he walk? So four questions in 54, verse 54. How, what's his language? <clears throat> uh, how, how does he speak? How does he sit? And how does he walk? Now, who has read the Bhagavad Gita? So, uh, some of you studied Bhakti Shastri, but um, I can still ask. So, if you. Yeah, it's a, it will be strange if I say if you know the answer, don't raise your hand. <laughs> anyway, so yes. Uh, what is the answer <clears throat> to the question, how does he speak? Where, in the, where Krishna answers. Uh, here in this second chapter, uh, Arjuna's question, how does he speak? Bhagavad Dharma is smiling, okay. Mishra <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speculating, again, but I think Sudha Shastra. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> and controlled? It's a good speculation, but uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, any other guess or maybe 
speculation or somebody knows. Do you have a guess? I have a guess. Yes? It only speaks the truth, so what is proven in the Shastra and what is pleasing to the ears. Oh yes, what is pleasing to ears? That's actually that's actually that's actually in chapter 17. Uh, um, <clears throat> austerity of the speech. Uh, he speaks pleasing words. Satyam, or oh, truthful. Uh, satyam, priya, priya, pleasing, and uh, Svadhyaya Vyasana, based on the Shastra. Yeah, actually three things from uh, 1716 uh, about austerity of speech. Uh, yes, that's the austerity of speech, uh, but no, this is not the answer to this question here in chapter 2. <clears throat> because in chapter 2, uh, Krishna uh, already answers here, but differently. Uh, you had uh, some guess? Uh, it's uh, beneficiary and it's not, and not disturbed. These are two more added to the three mentioned. Yes, it's from the same verse, 17, 16, yes. <clears throat> it's uh, truthful, based on Shastra, pleasing, also not disturbing, and also uh, beneficial. Yeah, we got all five austerities of speech. Yes, that's okay. correct. That's 17, 16, wonderful. But no, this is not uh, in uh, this chapter. This is from chapter 17. <clears throat> Actually, you <clears throat> will not find a clear uh, answer easily here. <clears throat> because the, the, the questions are not uh, actually literal. Because the question about his language doesn't mean does he speak Slovenian, does he speak Croatian, does he speak English or does he speak Sanskrit? Does he speak uh, Pali? You know, which, so which language does he speak? Uh, so Vishnachak Prajitakur says no. Uh, we already have some little comment in Prabhupada's translation that this first question, what's his language, <clears throat> means uh, what is the definition? Prabhupada says what are the symptoms? What is the definition of a sage? Uh, some, they, they say that uh, people, by uh, looking, at, hear, looking at you for 15 seconds and hearing to you for 15 seconds, can give you a more correct IQ estimation than uh, even your friends. After 15, 20, 20 seconds, half a minute is enough to, to uh, estimate uh, uh, an IQ of a person. Of course, IQ is not everything, that's not as important as EQ, <laughs> and EQ is not as important as SQ and CQ. <laughs> CQ is culture quotient, uh, and uh, SQ is spiritual quotient. <laughs> So, uh, by language, we can uh, oftentimes um, guess. Oh, he's from uh, uh, Maribor. <laughs> we can guess something, right? Or we can guess uh, he studied this or he studied that. Uh, so, therefore, it's a code question to uh, have Krishna give a definition. So, who is this sage? who is always peaceful, knows uh, things deeply, is and is undisturbed. So, um, because then we have the next question, uh, how does he speak? So these look similar, but they are not the same. So uh, his definition, we have one verse, 55, and so Krishna says uh, that this is a person who um, gives up his mental desires and is satisfied inside. So he's satisfied and he doesn't identify with the desires of the, uh, I mean, doesn't identify with fantasies of the, of the mind. He doesn't identify with the fantasies. <clears throat> a little later he will say he's like a, uh, like a sea. Uh, into which so many rivers flow in, but it remains still undisturbed. 
it doesn't overflow because of the rivers. <clears throat> so in the same way, the desires can be there, but um, this person can uh, understand that that's not him, this is just the mind. Like, for example, if you see some advertisement many times, then you think... Uh, uh, um, shall we advertise something? <laughs> Um, all the den uh, number one uh, recommended uh, toothbrush, Oral B. So then you go to the uh, to the store, and then you see, aha, uh -huh, there is Philips, and there is or Oral B, Oral B, Brown. I don't remember Oral B, right? And then you <clears throat> think I should buy Oral B, right? Because that's everybody's. I mean, I saw. Uh, 24 advertisements for Oral B and only one advertisement for Panasonic, plus the price is four times different, so <clears throat> four times less. <clears throat> uh, but uh, um, I can also think do I actually need this new toothbrush if my old toothbrush is still working? Actually, I don't need. I was actually very tempted recently. I went to some, some shop here. What was I think? Was it Spar or was it Hofer? Not Spar, Hofer. Hofer? And I saw the Pulsur, uh, uh, the uh, heart rate monitor. How do you turn that? This, you know, this uh, the watch that measures your heart rate is good for exercise, so you know what's the. And it costed 9 euros 99 cents. <laughs> And I looked at it, you know, and it looked okay. It looked like, you know, like a good, good uh, uh, heart monitor. And I thought, and it's, and it's new, and it's nice, and it's cheap. I mean, 9 euros, 99 cents. Pretty. And I thought, but I have one. Yes, but that is old. <laughs> okay, let me think. I went again around. <coughs> came back again, I looked at it, and it looked really good. <laughs> and the price looked so nice. <clears throat> then I thought, but my old one also costed the same price. And it still works. And I rarely use it. <laughs> and um, it actually took some effort for me to just, you know, turn away and go away. And not to buy, I didn't buy it. <laughs> <clears throat> but I was very tempted. I was very tempted. <laughs> I almost bought it. Because <laughs> it was good, inexpensive, useful, usable, you know, very, very nice for, for everything. <clears throat> so, but this is the <clears throat> fantasy or a desire that just pops up. You know? And uh, I mean, it's a whole science where they put things in a supermarket. Oh, there's a whole, whole uh, universities are working on it. Where to put what, which thing? It's a, it's a whole, whole sign. Maybe some of you know this. How, how to do this? <laughs> where <coughs> things are put, and they change it, you know, so that because after some time you are used, you just come, go here, here, and out. So then you don't uh, see some other things. So therefore, after one year, they change it, so that you go some other. Go where is where is that thing? Where is that thing? And then it's oh, what is this? Huh? Maybe I should look at this. <laughs> And you buy something new. So these are desires of the mind. Oh, they are all around us. So then <clears throat> Krishna says, the definition is you are not identified and you are satisfied in yourself. <clears throat> you know, I'm a soul, I'm an eternal soul. Everything is good. I already have my heart rate monitor in my bag. <laughs> If I use it, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I don't need a new one as long as the old one is working. Why, why do I need a new one if, if it's the old one is working? And it's not so old. I mean, it's old, but it still looks okay. I can bring it. Afterwards, I can show it to you if you want. <laughs> so that's the first question. Then the second question, how does he speak, is actually what we were discussing last Sunday. How does he speak? So, uh, these are the next two, two verses, 56, 57, and uh, there you can actually recognize one word relating to speech. Nabinandati nadvashti. 
<clears throat> like we have Abhinandana Nitai. Abhinandana means uh, the praiseworthy. Or, yeah, praiseworthy. <laughs> praiseworthy. I actually have a lot of Nitais here. It's a very Nitai centered temple. <laughs> Very immersive. Of course, we have a whole bunch of Tatva here. <laughs> yeah, we have also one Gadadhar, no? We have a lot. Yes, it's actually interesting. We should make a study. <laughs> so, uh, Ab uh, Nabinandati means he does not uh, praise and he does not criticize when good and bad things uh, come. So, that's how he speaks. That's, that's the answer in chapter 2. So that's verse uh, 57. Krishna says, Nabinandari. He doesn't say, Yes! Uh, pizza kijai! I we can say prasadam pizza kijai. <laughs> Temple pizza kijai. But uh, otherwise, you know, don't be attached to, to <coughs> Of course, when you say kijai, usually something me, right? Or something connected to my things. <clears throat> so how does he speak? He doesn't praise material things and he does not criticize. He doesn't hate and he does not criticize material things. <clears throat> because uh, we can become uh, entangled. We can become, uh, we get drawn into useless quarrels. Oftentimes we quarrel about uh, such useless things from nothing. So many quarrels begin from nothing. Just misunderstanding. There's simple miscommunication, especially, of course, in, on the internet, because you don't hear, you don't see the expression, you don't hear the voice, and you think, oh, he's attacking me. Like, uh, I remember, I got a letter from Shona Karishi, our uh, uh, <clears throat> director of uh, Oxford, Oxford Center for Hindu Studies. So, he wrote to me about something, and I told him that, um, uh, Prabhu, uh, we have what we have, and what we don't have, we don't have. And he wrote to me, this is uh, uh, unacceptable. This philosophy is what ruins our society. That, uh, what is this? That our whole ISKCON is ruined by this philosophy. What is this? We have what we have. I was surprised, you know, I have never met him. I go to Braj Bihari and say, look, why does he, you know, uh, come so heavy upon me with, uh, how should I, I mean, what is this? Why does he attack me? Uh, and Braj Bihari is laughing, he says, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. You know, he's, uh, and it, it, I just downloaded his uh, interview. He does interviews um, on the death of his wife. <clears throat> his wife died, actually. <clears throat> and uh, eight years ago, but when, even when he speaks about, he's a joker, you know, he, he speaks, he, he laughs all the time. Even when he speaks about sad topics, you can hear he's laughing. He's laughing and he's joking and he's, uh, he's um, even, even when he speaks about very sad things. It was, it's quite surprising. Some, I mean, it's good that people are laughing, that's better, better than... Uh, so, I didn't hear the intonation. I, and I don't know him, and I misunderstood. But even I see the person, even I hear the intonation, and how, how often do we misunderstand? Yeah, but so often we misunderstand. Yeah. <clears throat> so therefore, do not praise, do not criticize. <laughs> Krishna says, <clears throat> there's a, actually a whole science, non-violent communication, or devotees call it uh, in, uh, compassionate communication. Compassionate communication. How to speak so as not to hurt, and it's sometimes people are hurt in, uh, in such unexpected uh, ways. Something quite innocent. Somebody just says something quite innocent, and the person is so insulted, so hurt. It's amazing, especially for us men. So that's how he speaks. He doesn't. So, so how does he speak? He doesn't. He does not praise and does not. Criticize. Yes, he doesn't criticize. He doesn't praise. He doesn't criticize. Yes. Now, how does he sit? Now, to answer this question, you have to know what does it mean. 
First, we have to understand the question. How does he sit? Properly. <laughs> <laughs> it's no answer properly. This is properly sitting section. Sit properly. Sit properly. So what is properly sitting? Uh, sit up straight up. Straight up. Okay. Sitting is the new smoking. <laughs> of course, unless you sit as, as a yogi. Actually, you just... Anyway, we will not go there. That's, we don't have that, enough time and we have only London and if I go there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be distracted, sorry. So, uh, the question is... <clears throat> who, who are we speaking about? The sage. The sage. The sage who is in samadhi, who is peaceful, who is in full knowledge. So the question is, how uh, does so? How does he speak? Means how does he react to the duality of this world? There's good and bad happening. So what is it? How does he react? So it last last Sunday we were speaking how to suffer correctly. So you know um, there is a popular saying, making rounds on Facebook, uh, pain is unavoidable, suffering is optional. Pain will come. Is there anybody who never felt pain? <clears throat> then we need to go to the doctor, because pain is actually a signal to <clears throat> protect us. But suffering, <clears throat> that means you repeat that pain, you keep that pain, you hold on to this pain. <clears throat> you give some bad interpretation to this pain. So therefore, therefore, uh, <clears throat> Krishna says he doesn't <coughs> praise, he doesn't criticize. So that's how he reacts to the duality, good and bad. Now, how does he sit? How can he sit? How can he stay peaceful amid? Okay, he doesn't criticize, you know, like somebody uh, pushes me or, you know, gives me pain and I sit. I don't criticize. But inside I boil. Oh, how could he say this? How could he? Especially if you, I, I notice sometimes uh, in the morning when you chant Japa, and if yesterday or two days ago you uh, quarreled with somebody, oh, it's so difficult. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, why did he? How could he? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, go back, go to this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But no, but how could he? This is, this is so wrong. <laughs> This is so wrong. <laughs> no, it's not proper. <laughs> so he should be <clears throat> also peaceful in the mind. So the question of Arjuna is how can he sit peacefully, undisturbed, amid the dualities? Okay, he doesn't speak. All right. But inside, how he is not disturbed? <clears throat> so the question is uh, uh, <clears throat> how, how is he not disturbed among the dualities? And Krishna's answer is uh, like a turtle, like a tortoise. You sit like a tortoise. Who's the senses? Who has been playing with a tortoise ever? <laughs> so you touch it and it pulls things inside. <laughs> so and then it's uh, protected. Yeah? <coughs> so we do not. Uh, pull out our, uh, we do not uh, indulge in um, sense enjoyment. And of course Krishna says it's only possible if you uh, yukta asita, and you can see there is a, there also there is some uh, a little hint of sitting because he says in uh, 261, the first drop of bhakti, yukta asita matpara, uh, he, uh, asita is sitting. Uh, although you don't see this in translation, the asita means he sits uh, focused on me. So in other words, and, and he explains, he has higher, a higher taste. A higher taste. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so therefore, lower things do not disturb him. So we have, we develop a, only by higher taste. So like a mother, you know, the child is doing nonsense, she gives him something proper to do. Or he eats dirt, mother gives him a sweet. And then automatically he gives out this, uh, this smaller thing, right? <clears throat> so we develop a higher taste and we have a higher goal. 
I remember I noticed this when I was uh, <coughs> in our BBT temple, and then our BBT temple was uh, uh, actually being closed down, and all the 26 languages we were going, we were said, okay, we are closing, <coughs> 99, and uh, where do you want to go? You, <coughs> I said, can I go to Rindal? I said, okay, you can go to Rindal. So it was still half a year before I went, uh, but uh, I was still in the temple, and I remember, before this, I was walking around and I thought, what is this? This is not clean. Why did it not? Who, who is supposed to? And I, was, I would go to the person who was supposed to clean, and I would go to the temple president, and I'd go to this, and I, even if I didn't go, I was disturbed inside by something. But then, you know, I remember, I walk near the same thing, there was one bathroom which was uh, like, uh, there were several bathrooms, but there was one bathroom, so somehow it escaped being cleaned. Because <laughs> it was in a, like in a separate place. <clears throat> and I remember I uh, noticed, I'm not disturbed, because I see something is wrong, but I think anyway, I'm living in half a year uh, already, so anyway, what does it matter? <clears throat> I'm going out, I'm, I'm on my way out. So, whatever. <laughs> it didn't disturb me. So, <clears throat> the same way, if you have, if you know we are on our way out, we are going to Kuloka, if we are going to Krishna, you will, we can sit peacefully, even if something is bad. <clears throat> anyway, this is, I mentioned last time, this is a prison. It's a good prison sometimes. And there, there are good prisons also, but, you know, prison is a prison. <coughs> and we are going out. So, if something is not good in prison, but you're going out after a few days, will you go around complaining? It's just after a few days you go out. And this is a prison. I mean, of course, there should be no crime. I mean, there should be no... It should be proper, it should be merciful, but there are prisons. <clears throat> and this world is a prison for the adventurous boys and girls like us. Now, we are coming to uh, the topic of today's class. <laughs> How does it work? So now you already know. Uh, language means uh, definition. He's peaceful. Uh, how does he speak? Uh, how, do, how does he speak means what? How does he react to the reality? Good and bad. And how does he react? He does not yeah. praise or criticize. Okay. How does he sit? He does indulge Yes, he like a turtle. He, he, and how can he be peaceful? Yuktasya Tamatbara, because he has higher taste, because he's focused on a higher goal. So therefore he can be okay, so what to do? He can be undisturbed. How does he walk then? What does it mean? How does he work? Yes. Yes. Because uh, <clears throat> we have not only to sit, we also have to work and act. How does he act? Okay, sitting, okay, clear, <clears throat> like a turtle. That we like. We go and like a turtle. But how does he act in this world without becoming bound by reactions? Because oftentimes, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Whatever you do, somebody will complain. Especially if you do a lot of things, or something important like management, you know, uh, always some somebody any decision somebody will be dissatisfied. No decision also somebody will be dissatisfied. Anything always will be somebody will be dissatisfied. Today I heard a class. Be very careful. Do never criticize management <laughs> because they will make you a manager. <laughs> Or maybe you should criticize management, and then, <laughs> then we'll make you management. <laughs> we need helpers, assistance for, <clears throat> for managing things. So how does he work? How does he walk? So <clears throat> Krishna says <clears throat> in this verse, a person free from all attachment and aversion, and able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom, can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. So, he acts also without uh, attachment, I must have it, I must have it, and without hatred, no, not 
this again. No, I cannot do this. So without attachment and without hatred. But according to uh, the uh, regulative principles of freedom. Regulative principles of freedom means we uh, see how does Shastra say, how do we eat, for example. Like, we need to eat, right? And this is one of the biggest sources of bad karma for so many people, for the, for the world. Yeah? Prabhupada says, um, until uh, we stop uh, bloodshed of, you know, every year, how many? 90 billion uh, animals are killed. 90 billion, 90, 90, no, 200 billion, 200 billion, sorry, 90 billion, that's just, 90, 200, 200, if you count fish, 200 billion animals are killed. If you are a vegetarian, every year you save 155 fish, and they all give you blessings. They say, blessings, be blessed, because <laughs> you don't need them. <clears throat> you think, how is it? Fish I eat, if I eat, I don't eat only two fish a year. Yes, but then to feed them, you have to kill 10 other fish. And then, you know, actually they, they counted how many. So Shastra says, okay, you eat, but you eat vegetarian, and uh, you offer this to Krishna. You cook uh, purely and with love, and you with good consciousness, and you offer it to the Lord. And then this uh, pure vegetarian uh, food purifies you, gives you good fortune, makes you uh, elevated, purifies even the consciousness. <clears throat> I can tell you many stories <clears throat> after the kirtan. <laughs> so, how does he work? He works without attachment and without uh, hatred. He follows uh, the uh, recommendations of uh, the Shastra. So he <clears throat> does it for the, for the pleasure of the Lord, and then he's free. Prasadam adhikachati. He gets prasadam. <coughs> and prasadam means many things. <laughs> prasadam means food, prasadam means mercy, prasadam means peace. So that's how he walks. He walks uh, <clears throat> following recommendations of Krishna, and for the pleasure of the Lord. Shri Panchatattva Ki Jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare principles of Shastra, he describes everything, how things can be done, <clears throat> so, so that we are uh, happy, actually. Prasad, he speaks in the next verse, then you get mercy, and everything is good. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Kirtan. Hare Prabhu, Jai. 